Hello and welcome to the Skyland Spurs Adventure Developer Commentary. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the environment artist Alessandro Briglia. In the first Skylander, I was an environment artist. Previously, I was working uh, in another uh, um, Activision studio. Sadly, it closed. And uh, I moved on Toys for Bob. Uh, uh, essentially because it was close to the, where I lived, <laughs> very close. This was the only reason. And I was an environment artist. Then uh, people just ask around uh, if somebody have uh, some experience with the uh, um, character. So I had this experience before I was a character artist mostly. And uh, I started to work with the way to the fish character in uh, Skylander. Then in time I become a lead character artist and my work was like create the uh, Skylander for the game and also uh, take care about the prototyping with the 3D printing for uh, creating the toys. That's awesome. So um, you said you worked on uh, other Activision games. What were you working on before Skylanders? Oh, I work in Shaba Game in San Francisco. They have the working from uh, uh, hero, it was DJ Hero, okay. and they started to work uh, on uh, another project uh, involving uh, uh, Marvel character, but the company sadly closed uh, before the project took flight. Oh, that's a shame. That's cool that you got to work on it though. Well, it was very exciting, it was very exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah I imagine so. Um, so you did uh, a lot of the environments for the first Skylanders? Not too much. I started mostly with props. Um, I make, uh, I work in one level and uh, after uh, probably six months, uh, eight months, uh, uh, UA noticed that uh, I make a character too in my spare time uh, and uh, he stole me from the environment team uh, to the character. Awesome. So uh, just to go back to like the environment aspect, were there any parts that were drastically different uh, from the uh, final version of the game when you started on it? Like, did you did you go through multiple iterations of anything? Yes, uh, um, we started, uh, and uh, I arrived in the second half of the project, uh, and uh, there was a lot, a lot of working on, and uh, Activision started to notice uh, to the potentiality of the game. And at uh, one point, uh, if I will remember, it gave us a little bit more time to refine what we did. And um, again, it was completely brand new. Nobody did this before. And uh, they were, were go through a lot of change, a lot of change. Because uh, have a little bit more time uh, allow us uh, to implement things that we can uh, do at the time uh, that we have before. And, um, to refine and uh, change in the game. It was really a lot of change. So what? Uh, which Skylanders did you uh, help make? Because um, I'm, I'm guessing a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, do you remember what the first was, one was? Uh, yeah. At the start, uh, there was uh, practically on the character, the second game, uh, it was me. And then we started to hire people to go ahead with the, the Skylander Giant. And we were at the start, uh, one, two, three, in Giant, uh, probably between three and four people in total that we go through the Giant. We make uh, all the character and toys. And uh, everything started uh, in, um, and they have also different pipeline, a lot of different pipeline. There was a very incredible evolution through the all the game. Initially, um, we don't have any, kind of 3D printing or prototyping. So you may create uh, uh, the sketches, send them outside in another company. They start to modeling the model, the, the character, and then when they have approval, sent to China to create the mold for the, for the toy. I let you imagine how many uh, misunderstanding point of view, it was like a, a block bat. <laughs> Every time, they said, no, it's green, it's not blue. <laughs> and uh, it is, it's, very, it's very easy because um, when you have just a sketch, um, interpretation, take, take everything. And uh, it was bad. 
But uh, in Giant, uh, uh, we started to talk about 3D printing. It was um, 3D printing start, uh, become to be, uh, start to become a very interesting technology. And we have uh, one of these machines uh, that at the point of the company decided to buy one. One of these machines, they use plaster and make uh, the toy that uh, making plaster, the color. And we make half, uh, after this is printed a shower with super glue, very funny stuff. Huh? And, uh, and become like porcelain, but they are in color. They, are, uh, they give like the real uh, uh, feeling of how the toy is done. So we start to develop our prototyping in-house. And it was amazing. You know, we start from zero to reading manuals uh, and testing things. Uh, and uh, it was exciting, extremely exciting. That's awesome. So in this way, we start to send to directly cut the middleman and send to China the file for the 3D printer. And um, the timing for creating the toys um, really shrink a lot. Then uh, after Giant, uh, we have a new 3D print uh, machine, a professional one with plastic. And from then on, we start to really make the toys. Um, what the toys that you have uh, in uh, you buy on, uh, on the shop are exactly what we modeled uh, in house. And again, it was an insane, fun, and incredible experience. Yeah, I imagine. Were were the Swap Force characters harder to make because they were changeable parts? You had to, you could switch them over and stuff. Well, at one point we saw we noticed that uh, uh, we cannot uh, keep producing uh, one game a year. So we have a, a partner company, uh, Vicarious Vision, that take care about uh, uh, every other year about uh, one of the calendar games. So Swap Force was made by Vicarious Vision, and we help them uh, with the study of the um, uh, structure for the uh, part that we swap it. We had on uh, in our team uh, Robert Leyland was an incredible, incredible. Uh, technician that is uh, help study the way that uh, all these toys working <coughs> and um, how can you swapping and the portal uh, can detect the swap is um, when you see the, 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 the toys and everything is look like uh, so easy but behind it, there was like a test uh, and in really some kind of wizardry mm. <laughs> Really, sometimes uh, Robert make this stuff in a really way and they watching and they're okay. Oh, look, they have a light. And I was like, okay, I don't understand how it's working, but it's working, so I'm fine. And uh, there was a lot, a lot to work behind. Uh, but at the end, they find the way and uh, Vicario Vision was able to deliver the game uh, as well force. So when you were making uh, the 3D models, were you creating the 3D models based off of uh, concept art, or were you creating them from scratch? No, is um, all models, all characters really come from the uh, UA directly, for, especially for the toys, and the concept art department. At the start, especially for the toys, uh, the work is, it was very hard, because uh, the toys were at the least the, one of them uh, big revenue for this product. So in, they need to go to incredible uh, uh, going back, going back uh, between uh, Toys for Bob and Activision to define the, the kind of character, the look, uh, the kind of uh, um, action he can do, the, the, the power and everything. And it was a, a really a long process because um, one time the, the toy is done, is done, it's not like a, in, the, in the digital world where you have a video games, uh, that on one point somebody realized, you know, this character is not very successful. Well, we can change. When you tell, oh, this character is not successful, we can change the toy, is mean uh, uh, millions of dollars of change because the mold and everything. So everything must be done perfectly. And uh, a toy character before uh, be approved, you have months and months and months of work. 
refine, uh, change, uh, some character, uh, uh, for example, I remember one of the characters, Ninjini. Originally, Ninjini was uh, looked like uh, uh, a Dream of a Genie character from the old show. And, uh, um, but uh, it was considered too sexy. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was, we look at each other like mm, it's not sexy, it's a normal character. But, so it was uh, the, maybe the color of the skin or whatever. And it went uh, and in probably four or five different interactions before we find the correct way. Behind the, also, you must be thinking that uh, when you make toys or character, there, there is a parameter, not just a, a American parameter, but also uh, if you, for example, you're selling for the Middle East, uh, and you cannot have uh, some uh, female character uh, with part pose or um, you have two, um, two uh, can I tell, um, like arms uh, or legs. Uh, too much exposed. We must be thinking about uh, when you have a worldwide product, uh, where the country you go, what kind of problem you have, what kind of, of uh, um, different uh, society or different point of view they can have. So the character need to be perfect on uh, a lot of different level. Right. And sometimes uh, there is a limit, strong limitation. For example, there is in Germany, uh, you cannot use uh, fire. This fire is big taboo, it looks like. So some character need to have the fire uh, done in a specific way if you want to use it. Oh, interesting. So it's, uh, it's a long process. It's a very long process. So for one character, you have like probably around six months of creation. Then when everybody give uh, the green light, production uh, and everybody, we start to have like a couple of sketches and we start to work on ZBrush to create the model. Then uh, you go refine it, you way work with us to give us more uh, sketches or explain what you want from us. And we created the basic model that we go in game. When this is done, we use the same source that we use for the character in game, the ZBrush file, to put the character in pose. Usually we work on five, six different poses and then uh, again a lot of uh, feedback and change we find the final pose. Also this is, is very important because it's not just, uh, you know, don't need to be just a very cool pose. But also needs to be a pose that can be uh, chunked in piece uh, and make a toys. So they have some kind of pose, they are very cool, but it's very expensive if you want to transform in a toys. And the price also is a, a big uh, deterrent. Price for the plastic, the part, the color, everything become uh, a, a limitation. So when a toys is done, just from one toys probably is eight months of work constantly. And then we are ready for the fish shipping to China for having the prototype. Wow, that is a long time for Skylander. Um, which Skylander would you say went through the most changes? Huh. It's very hard because uh, all of them yeah. all <laughs> go through an incredible amount of changes. It's very hard that the one character has a good air and that, okay, done, we like it. Mm. It's a lot, a lot of change. And then sometimes happen, uh, uh, like for example, um, when we arrive at the point that we're thinking we have our character, we have our 40 gold character, we show them to a test uh, group or child, and they are brutal because a child, uh, they don't care about, uh, it's not like you can explain, or they like it or they don't like it. So sometimes you work a lot, uh, like, Six months of a character, I come the test uh, group of child, they're looking and it sucks and they leave. And the character is dead. <laughs> <laughs> is dead. 
when they have like this, uh, you have this feedback, uh, you can explain, uh, no, no you, know, you have a sword, you have like a, it's like a samurai, and, uh, no, no, suck. It, it happened a couple of times and it was horrible. Yeah. Was working six months of a character and then we, we kill it in just one day. And you start, and you, and you, and you go back to the start, to the, draw, the drawing board and create another one. Yeah, I was going to ask, are there any uh, scrapped characters? But the answer would be, yeah. Yeah, and it's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. But at one point, we make these toys for them. And uh, it, it was very important to to nail it, what they like it. During the year, during project after project, we start to develop some kind of understanding uh, which one character is successful, which not, uh, what kind of pose. Uh, so it become more easy, more easy. But um, we always, when they come the group test, they were scared like hell. <laughs> <laughs> never, everybody silence in the studio. So uh, could you tell me about any of the, uh, the scrapped Skylanders? Um, do, you, do you remember what some of them were or did they have names at the time? Well, names are changing. Names for the uh, character change probably three or four times during the project. Ah, uh, let me thinking. Uh, the the one that I think. Oh, right. Uh, I don't know. Is there was one that looked like a, a, an Egyptian mummy, and we thinking he's gold. Everybody love it. He's a mummy. He's a, a warrior. And then boom, kill it. Wow. Wh which game was that? Um, I think it was giant, but uh, the character then uh, he went. Uh, everybody loved it. Everybody loved it. So in a way, on another, in another, it changed and they become uh, uh, another character similar. And uh, for the last game, uh, I don't remember the name of the character because they changed so many times. The name yeah, of course. Between lost, but. Uh, it became um, this uh, um, armor, completely armored black dude with a sword that they keep the sword on the ground. I yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, I can't remember the name, but I, rem I remember the Skylander. Um, yeah, yeah. You, in in one previous life, it was a mummy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do you have a favorite Skylander? Uh, it's very hard. It's very hard. Everybody, all of them have like. Uh, a special place, uh, mm, special challenge. Uh, there was um, oh yeah, uh, one was the uh, the giant uh, wasp. Oh Pass, I think it was the yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of awesome. Yeah, and um, because uh, mm, my desk was close to the uh, sound uh, uh, studio inside the office. Uh, one day they make the voice for uh, the character, and uh, I will start to joking about, uh, and then they say, "Oh, if you think this is so easy, try to make the voice." So, as a joke, I make the voice. <laughs> they like it, and at the end of the game, uh, the voice of the character is very similar to the kind of make at the time. So. For this reason, probably is one of my preferite because uh, it allowed me to have this experience, uh, and it was uh, fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, another one, I uh, was uh, um, yeah, uh, the one uh, the, the chains with the chainsaw at the for the the last Skylander, the um, one of the master with the two chainsaw sword and the chain as a beard, and uh, it was a uh, really a hell of a challenge because uh, have the chains of beard and you must to move around and they stretching we must to find a way to animate it it was uh, really a big challenge and uh, probably is another one that, they, that I liked a lot so what was your favorite part of development favorite part is uh, absolutely the starting to develop the character with zbrush when you're sculpting the character and uh, you start to develop, you start to take shape, you start to become real, if you want. And uh, obviously the 3D printing. Uh, 3D printer is, uh, is in some way is incredible for an artist because uh, you spend all your life uh, making all this character inside the screen of a computer. You never saw, you never touch. 
is there, but you never touch it. And then when you're 3D printing the character, the toy that you worked for six months, uh, is uh, a very strong emotion. I always joke like uh, to the new people that come to the studio and the 3D printing, waiting. Now we start to cry. <laughs> and people uh, see the first time their own work in their own hand, that touch the character they make it, and there's always a strong emotional response. That's, that's lovely. Um, I don't know if this is going to be an easy question to answer or not. What would you say is the weirdest thing that happened during development? Oh, I can tell, I, I can tell a story. Yeah. One time, uh, uh, Iway and Robert, uh, they start to, to look to cover with some kind of stronger resin the kind of 3D printer that they use plaster, because they're very fragile. After the um, super glue bath, uh, they become like porcelain, but it's very hard, to, for example, to uh, send to the uh, Activision in uh, Los Angeles uh, because they can broken. They are part, they are too thin. So they start to try to use uh, a different kind of resin. And uh, at one point, they're thinking that oh, this kind of resin, uh, it can see, it can be strong enough. They take the toys, they drop on the table, and the toys survive. So I come back from lunch and. Uh, very proud, they look at me and uh, throw the toys. I take the toys and they throw in the ground, <laughs> mash on the ground, <laughs> I completely destroy the toy. And then they're screaming at me and, uh, what are you doing? You tell me, throw the toy. Well, you destroy the toy. Well, so from then on, there was this joke that uh, if survive me, the toys survive everything. So they call the Italian drop test. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, so what have you worked on since Skylanders? Um, I work uh, on Spyro. It was the, uh, we have some, pro uh, some project, uh, some test, uh, some idea, then uh, we work on, we move to Spyro. So I work on the last Spyro game. What uh, roles did you have when working on Spyro? Uh, I, I was still a uh, lead character artist uh, and take little bit um, um, managerial uh, also uh, position for dealing with the, the um, outsourcing people. Oh, awesome. Yeah, well, uh, your, your work on both Skylanders and Spyro is very much appreciated because uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, I speak for everyone when I say that we love the... Uh, the, the Skylanders um, and how they turned out uh, uh, in game and as a figure. So, I, mean, I mean, I've got a bunch of them in front of me right now. They're just so awesome to look at, <laughs> to hold. Um, and uh, and yeah, uh, everyone's work on uh, Spyro as well is just amazing. With like, yeah, because obviously, so many fans of Spyro from childhood uh, and just like, also Spyro was like. Uh, um extremely challenging project because uh, practically we made uh, three games in the time that usually is, is uh, required for make one so it was like uh, very hard but at the other hand rewarding yeah i mean it's a, it's it's a very uh, it's a very like uh, personal game for me because i mean uh, spyro 2 was one of my first ever games um <laughs> like I, I got a ps1 when i was Four with Crash Two and Spyro Two, so this is I was just like, I need to play this. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is this is my childhood. At one point we we were talking about uh, uh, the next project, and uh, what you describe is what would drive us uh, to one point choose uh, Spyro as a game. Yeah, we have such a strong feedback from the fan uh, of this, the original Spyro uh, trilogy that uh, at one point it was like, yeah, we must do it. That must be quite rewarding also when you you work from one game and then you move on, even though you obviously love Skylanders, working yeah, on something new. Yeah, and uh, for Skylander was uh, also, was like, um, in some way, everybody have uh, this feeling that, um, especially because you have uh, like the test group, the coming, uh, and you see your, the child play with the toys and everything, it was so incredible to see the joy that they have. Uh, this is something that is uh, overwhelming you sometimes. Um, one day, come 
this text group and um, they go around to the studio watching everything and I have on my desk uh, uh, it was uh, yeah it was Ninjini the last 3D printer the, uh, the Ninjini and these boys stop and look at me like a, oh you like Ninjini I like too I play with the hair today with the hair and they have the sword and start to describing all the power all the all this all the action all this and see how it was joyful it was like uh, overwhelming you know that to do something yes is a job you do this uh, um, and you make a video game but see directly from in first hand what kind of uh, reaction what kind of feeling you can give to, to a little child it was like uh, incredible yeah it's totally overwhelming i'm sure you've shaped many children's lives uh, through i through feel so work. blessed to do to have a part of this project to be that is insane so uh, i guess finally um what advice would you give to people looking to get into the gaming industry it's hard it's very hard because in, in some ways it look like uh, simple. Today there is program uh, that they help you doing things that are, are incredible, incredible, and in, in very easy way. But uh, it's very important the base. Um, be a person that know very well how to use a program uh, is important, but also it's very important that you uh, cultivate your creativity. In the one word that uh, is easy possible to do everything with a program, what makes the difference is, uh, is uh, uh, your personal way to do it, your originality, your your touch. So sometimes it's very easy to be uh, driven by a program that make uh, uh, some stuff easy. For example, after uh, uh, ZBrush start to show how easy it was to create a fur and, and a hair, everybody make a um, werewolf. Don't be driven by a program because uh, it's possible to do something uh, and be uh, cultivate your originality, your your style, is and um, be ready to have a rough time because uh, competition now is worldwide. But uh, if you stay, you stick on your dream and uh, give enough time, try, try, fail, and learn from uh, this uh, failure, at the end you, you arrive at the point, arrive where you want to go. Well, that is, it has been awesome and a pleasure to speak to you. Um, thank you so much for being a part of this project. It's a pleasure to talk with you and uh, talk about the Skylander is, is always uh, warm my, my heart. Is uh, at, the least, at the least I work eight years on this uh, project and uh, it's, it's part of my life. <laughs> it's, uh, it can never be go away. Of course. And uh, is um, again uh, Mostly because uh, I was so lucky and to work with the so amazing, amazing, amazing people, amazing people, uh, great artists. Uh, they teach me everything, and the work with them, uh, it was like every day uh, a magic day. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, share the video around. I also have a Twitch, a Twitter, and a Patreon if you would like to support me and the channel. As you can probably tell, this is a massive passion project of mine that I've been working on for quite some time, and I'm really glad that I'm able to get it out to you, and I'm really grateful for you watching the video. If you want to see more from the series or other stuff that I do on this channel, click that notification bell to be notified when I upload next. But thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>